Hey everybody! In this episode, we'll be talking about what I'm seeing so far with the prevailing wages and the H2B process, what trends we can expect to see in the April cycle, and I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what you're going to be seeing in terms of content in this week as I embark on a lobbying trip to Washington, D.C., uh, where I'll be meeting with lots of recruiters, lots of folks that know what's happening in the Central American and Mexican recruiting space for H2B visas. I'll be bringing you a host of videos all week about that. So I'll see you after the break. Hi everybody, welcome to Law Great. I'm recording this on December 6, 2021. In a few hours here, I'm getting on a plane and going to Washington, D.C. We started getting our first prevailing wages on Ta-da! December 1st. So that was a full 30 days from the first prevailing wages that we filed on November 1st for this cycle. The prevailing wages are more or less coming in line with OES uh, prevailing wage guidelines. Now, this is making the prevailing wages higher uh, than some people would like uh, in bigger metropolitan areas like Atlanta, Los Angeles, um, certainly, you know, New York City, they're coming in well over $15 an hour for even the lowest skilled tasks. I am calling this a trend. This is something that everybody just has to get used to. This is the way it's going to be going forward. Uh, we don't really have the ability to use private survey data anymore. We have to use state-based uh, uh, state -based surveys, which all tend to be OES surveys anyway. There was some chatter around 2017, before 2017, excuse me, about changing that so we could, can, you could use private surveys to bring in lower wages. You can't do that. Everything's coming in at the OEC level or above. And again, this is a trend. One thing that I'm hearing from our recruiting partners is that um, basically the percentage of applications this year is going to be about 40 to 50% higher. Now, I call that a win for me because in earlier videos, I predicted that we would see about a 50% bump since I thought that last April we actually saw a part of the bump that we hadn't seen in the October cycle yet and that we wouldn't see a full 100% increase in applications as we did during the October 2021 cycle a few months ago. Okay, so we can expect to see, you know, if, we, if we're talking about there were 96,000 visa spots requested last year, we can see upwards of 130,000 visa spots requested this year. And while there were upwards of 5,500 employers last year, we can expect to see 7,500 or so this year. A whole lot of people also got left out in the, in the cold in the October cycle. On December 3rd, we were was kind of the deadline to see if uh, Congress uh, would be able to shoehorn in an additional number of workers for the October cycle. That's, that has passed. We're not going to get any. So you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of those employers, I think, that were waiting on that kind of December 3rd deadline now jump into the April cycle and the calls to our firm have reflected that. Okay. The other big question that's popped up as the question really in recruiting is what countries have qualifying COVID-19 vaccines uh, so that their workers can get through the immigration process quickly. Right now, if we're looking at Central America, it is unclear if Guatemala and Honduras have the right mix of COVID vaccines to bring their workers in safely, quickly through the process so that they're not long delays in bringing those workers to the United States. Now, we love Guatemala and Honduran workers uh, traditionally uh, within DC, you know, they've always uh, been given preferential treatment. Same thing is, is true for El Salvador to an extent. But for me, the question that's going in my mind, and I don't know the answer yet, I hope, I'm hoping to get more information when I go to this conference with the, with, with the recruitment folks where we will hear presentations from uh, uh, USAID representatives and recruiters who are working uh, with the governments of these Northern Triangle countries, I, I'm gonna get some answers on, on what the COVID-19 uh, vaccine situation is for those places. Mexico, though, is looking good. I mean, the J&J &J vaccine seems clearly to be available to everyone. Moderna and Pfizer are kind of still, 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 still uh, ramping up production there. But Mexico seems to be a good country. Jamaica, unclear. So I'm going to be going and figuring out that as well. And there's other countries, obviously, but those are on a case by case basis. I'm just looking at kind of the key recruitment countries for the H2B. So guys, I'm going to be going to this conference. I'm going to be reporting back. I'm trying to make a lot of these like short vlogs. Um, and I hope this is then, you know, somewhat, it's a helpful resource to you because I will be in the kind of the epicenter of the H2B world um, this week. Why am I there? 
I'm there for lobbying week. I, I'm part of the Seasonal Employment Alliance, the SEA, and they're lobbying congressional representatives to just make the H-2B program and the H-2A programs, our seasonal worker programs, better and have them updated for this time when there's a huge labor shortage in the United States. So other members, I'm not gonna be able to do it, but you know, on Wednesday, there's gonna be a, a, a day of action where other members are going up and, and talking to congressional representatives. I will be there all day Tuesday where there's gonna be uh, uh, several presentations, Q and A's, um, and you know, it's gonna be lots of good stuff. Um, there will be an opportunity if, if you want to take part in this SEA week of action, this sort of lobbying week for the H2B, and I'll try to leave those links um, in the videos later this week, okay? So, um, H2B season, it's, 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 it's kick-started, you know, it's a trend that wages are coming in higher, Prevailing wages have taken 4.4 weeks. That's about how long a month is. You know, typically they were taking two to three. Now they're taking 4.4. And um, I, I am happy that we both predicted this increase of around 50%, which seems to be the number that everybody's converging on, a 50% increase um, for, for the April cycle based on last year. And I'm happy that, that we, we, we were conservative with when we wanted to file our prevailing wages for clients because it is, it is taking longer. So if at this point, like you're thinking about filing prevailing wage, you know, you gotta be thinking emergency petition in the back of your mind. If you want that, just give us a call. We still have the ebook in the, in the bottom. If you've made it this far, give me a subscribe and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Next video you'll see will be from DC, probably a hotel room or maybe they'll let me set up in, uh, in the conference. We'll see. All right, thanks so much.